Honestly, it's it's Maraji's grace to just my connection with him. You know, once just the deep connection I built with him, knowing I needed a guru, knowing I needed a spiritual teacher, someone to guide me and being in a human form and just with his sense of humor, his personality, I mean, he's just, he's just very lovable. Um, and so falling in love with him, of course, then he's, he's the person I go to to understand everything. There were so many questions like we grew up uh, we always have questions okay why am i here what's my purpose even though you know we are studying and being successful in our career and jobs but you know what is this life ahead of us um, you know after job you know you everybody gets married have kids and then you know die is this meant to be the you know the, the way the life supposed to end or there's something beyond always there everybody has that question but everybody doesn't get an answer so I was lucky enough that I listened to that Maharaj's lecture and um, I will be honest with me that every question that I had was answered Sri Maharaj for me is it's like a lifeboat he's a savior you know like it does often feel it's overwhelming yeah I'm in HR I deal with people's problems all day every day that's what I do I set up company this my entire world is problems and then I want to show up as a good mother to my children and bring them on this path, you know, and bhakti. And, and every time I start feeling like this is overwhelming, it's too much. I just, honestly, if I just look at a picture of Maharaji or I hear a chanting of Sri Maharaji, it's like as if he's speaking directly into my soul, you know? And I remember that, hey, all this is noise. This isn't our ultimate. Aim, our ultimate aim is to get back to him, to get back to Sri Radha Krishna. And so, you just remember that life is short and this isn't, all this is noise. And we've done it many times over and over and over again. And so, we can't do it again, <laughs> you know, that purpose. So for me, yeah, I don't know how else to say it. <laughs> no, the, the way he explains things, it's it's sometimes when he says, you know, Gadhe ki akal se samjho, that, that just hits me at a very different level. And when he says, I'll have to come down to your level to talk to you. And once he starts explaining things, it's just so very clear that what, whatever he's saying is absolutely uh, what I need to hear in the moment. And For me, it's um, that there's always somebody, you know, that um, um, even you, that you're never alone. God is always waiting for you, you know, it's, and no matter how hard you fail, you know, that um, he has seen your worst and your best, but um, it's always, he's always waiting. When it comes to why we do this, I mean, that's also a very loaded question. Um, there's so much that you get out of being here, not just, um, it's not just, progressing spiritually but it's this internal peace that you get so I just accepted him like my guru so I have picture so I was feeling like he's the one uh, holding him like a guru everything he's mine but to be very honest like little bit there was a scope I think something I was holding back but coming to here when I'm listening to Maharaj's lecture and after experiencing few of the thing then I can understand like uh, the way he's saying like uh, Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devu Maheshwara. So actually he is our everything. So we just have to hold him.
name is Sakshi Joshi and I am a primary care physician based out of California in the US. Um, and uh, I've been coming to India um, for these programs since 2010. So um, one of Maharaji's prajaraks actually came, or her, his preachers came to California, um, to the town that I live in. I was a teenager at the time, and so my mom was going to the, the weekly programs and the speeches, and I tagged along with her and uh, been coming ever since. So Maharaji, to start with, he was an early riser. He would wake up at around midnight, um, and he was very disciplined in his routine and his schedule. The, the class starts at four o'clock um, in the morning. And so we usually wake up between like two and 2.30 to start getting ready for the day. Starting so early is important because you're utilizing the time to its maximum potential. The morning session starts at four o'clock. So you usually wake up around two, 2.30, three o'clock to get ready for the day. After you get ready, you go to the hall. You can uh, do pranam at Maharaji's charan or Radha Krishna charan at the uh, altar in the front of the hall. Um, there's a lecture that is played of Sri Maharaji to start with. It's usually a short 10 minute video that um, kind of highlights uh, several things that Maharaji found to be very important uh, in directing us to do our sadhana. So things like Rup Dhyan, um, which is a focused meditation on God's forms, being humble, being you know kind, um, seeing God in everyone. forward with a short prayer to Sri Krishna and then the Aarti. buds, his kirtans that he's written, they're basically direct um, outline of how to think, what to feel about God. We always feel his presence here, um, not just because this is his dham, but even in his words when we're singing the kirtans, uh, we're reading the kirtans, um, they embody him and, and the whole philosophy. We do parikrama, which uh, we go around the whole campus essentially, um, and we're able to get darshan afterwards. You feel one, you feel all of the the energy of this, you know, divine dham of Sri Maharaji. And then we get to do uh, pranam and get darshan inside of Bhakti Mandir and inside of Guru Dham Bhakti Mandir. I've 
been to so many mandirs around the world, uh, different mandirs in India. I've been to mandirs in the US, and there is there is no mandir, uh, no Radha Krishna that I see in that compares to the mandirs here. Um, after that, uh, we have opportunity to have breakfast in the dining hall, which is called Seva Kunj. Um, one special rule that Maraji has in place here is um, to remain mon or silent, so we don't talk uh, generally when we're walking around um, or in the dining hall. The main reason behind that is to kind of keep that focus um, so you're not moving backwards. You've just had these couple of hours of intense um, devotion that you've uh, tried to accomplish and then um, to keep that momentum going, you kind of remain within yourself when you're eating. Even lunch and dinner too. Another special uh, thing in the dining hall is everything that we eat has a name, different names of God. For example, rice or chawal is God Hari, uh, roti is Radhe Radhe, and curry is Pitambar. The best way to nourish your body is with sattvic food. Um, as a doctor, I can also attest to the fact that what you eat really influences your body and your mind and so with that idea um, the food that's prepared in the dining hall for everybody here is um, very sattvic and very healthy for your, bi your body and your mind. Uh, the timings for our meals is about 6 to 7 30 for breakfast, 11 to 1 for lunch and uh, 5 to 6 30 for dinner so there are four sessions during the day um, generally we start from 4 to 6 and then you have 7 30 to 11 uh, about 1 1 to 4 30 and then the last session is 6 30 to 9 or 9 30. even though you're running on limited sleep from an you know overall perspective um, the the internal rest that you get from doing your sadhana and doing the devotion tends to compensate for that. So the evening session, um, the kirtan usually ends at 9.30 p.m. and after that then you you go back to your room, you rest and, and get ready to start the next day over again. <laughs> that is a loaded question. I mean, I have, there's, you have every feeling about Maraji, he's everything. So I have love for Maraji, respect. Um, I miss Maraji. Uh, I, I don't think words could describe how I feel about Maraji. So when it comes to why we do this, I mean, that's also a very loaded question. Um, there's so much that you get out of being here, not just, um, it's not just, progressing spiritually, but it's this internal peace that you get. Uh, there's a lot of negativity in the world. There's a lot of unhappiness. There's a lot of stress. And coming here, at some point, it's also selfish because you get to kind of escape all of that. I'm not thinking about work at home or anything. I'm just here focusing on myself.
Yes, well, I'm Ryan Brown. I am originally from Dallas, Texas, and currently live in Austin, Texas. Yeah, well, for me, uh, it was actually started with my freshman year roommate in college. Uh, I was definitely not ready at the time then, but he had a photo of Miraji then. Uh, and it, I was just curious because he clearly felt very uh, strongly about this person and I don't know anything, but I started to ask questions, you know, what is a guru, what is he like and things. Uh, so the seed was planted then. Uh, fast forward five years later, uh, it wasn't until I got enough kickings from the world, a lot of physical ailments, jobs, things like that, overworked, uh, and I just started to search. And uh, from then, I, I was living in Austin, and that's where my freshman year roommate had been living as well. And I had sold all my things. I was going to go travel the world on a free journey to renounce life. Um, and just so happened that he invited me to a retreat that weekend uh, right in right in the mix of when I was selling everything and once I got there that's when that's when things clicked and I realized that everything I was looking for was already there so instead of traveling the world I ended up going 20 minutes south of where I already was <laughs> yeah of course I would say the biggest thing is I think we all you know, if we're spiritually seeking, we all this idea of non-attachment, but he takes it a step further to really give context for why these things are the way they are. So we, at least in my experience beforehand, I'm trying to practice unconditional love with without attachment at the same time and have compassion for all. But I think the ingredient of no matter what we do, we're coming from a place of self-interest. It, it just makes a lot of sense and why there is a goal to obtain and why there is a lot of work sought to do. And once I just put context for all of our relationships, it, it was pretty freeing to, uh, to understand. And once that was the case, that's when just the devotion and the hunger for that to do, to, uh, to transcend that, if you will. So that's, that's when that at least clicked for me. Gosh, well, it definitely wasn't natural in the beginning. It was a very foreign experience, of course. I was raised predominantly Jewish, uh, emphasis on the ish. <laughs> wasn't that religious of a background, but um, that, that's all that I was familiar with. So honestly, it's it's Maraji's grace to just my connection with him. You know, once just the deep connection I built with him, knowing I needed a guru, knowing I needed a spiritual teacher, someone to guide me and being in a human form and just with his sense of humor, his personality, I mean, he's just hes just very lovable. Um, and so falling in love with him, of course, then he's hes the person I go to to understand everything. So that's when Radha Krishna would come in afterwards. So uh, it, definitely, it definitely wasn't an immediate connection with God in that respect, but considering he's God personified, um, luckily I just need to love him at least in the beginning. So, and then things evolve from there. Uh, I would say it's a deep cleaning. <laughs> You know, being my goal was to stay the, the entire duration of this program. So, I mean, one day here is I feel equal to like four or five days in the world. I mean, you're waking up at 2.30 in the morning, go see DDs and Zoom, and you have all this energy to then go to 4 a.m. RT, and it goes all the way until 9.30 at night, and you're doing it over and over again. And so it's it's a deep cleaning, and it, it's a roller coaster of emotion because, right, you have... I guess in Sanskrit, as he described, you have Milan and Vara, I believe, separation and union. So you're having this roller coaster of emotions all the time, and you're also trying to digest and deepen his philosophy and understanding. So it's, and it's just you, you and yourself. You're not uh, distracted with all the worldly doings that you normally do. So you're just having to constantly face where you're not fully aligned, where you're not surrendered and reflect like, oh wow, I'm, I, I could be doing better here, I could be doing better there. And that's happening you know, every 10 minutes of the day over these 35 days. So yeah, I just feel it moves the degree of difference in your devotion spiritually, whether it's just one degree over, but really it can move you know, many degrees over and then all of a sudden you can end all the way here going back into the world versus, you know, maybe where you were with these smaller progressions. So uh, they're, they're, I feel like large steps are taken in these days here. I would, I would say one of the most impressionable moments I had here was going to the school and the dental camp that they had and all the kids are lined up and, you know, of course the school's impressive. Everything's being supplied to them. I mean, these smart boards, the classrooms, I mean, everything, you know, we would have in the U.S. almost, they're, they're having here, but 
What really stands out is driving there, you see where these kids are coming from. And you know, they're, they're coming from absolutely nothing. Um, I mean, they're literally just coming from a shack and you know, dirt cobble roads and you know, making their way to school there. And so, you know, as a Westerner, there's just so much, you know, concern and occupation of whether we have enough security and and financial stability and and just to see how everyone is taking care of all of Maraji's children. I mean, to, to put myself in the shoes of a villager who has absolutely nothing and has faith in God to just see that everything is still provided for. I mean, even in, your case, in a case like that where you have nothing almost and all the worry in the world to, to be concerned with and yet everything's all the way down to dental care. <laughs> I mean, dental care, the hospital, education, I mean, being provided uniforms and a bike to get there. I mean, it, it really has me, you know, really reflect on, you know, you know, of course, how, how for, how grateful I am to have what I have, but just to not have to worry as much as I have to worry. I mean, if Maraji takes care of someone to that extent, it's just so obvious. It's like, who am I to worry about anything? Um, so yeah, I would say all these camps put, put things in perspective from coming where I, where I live. My name is Reshni Lal. I'm from currently residing in Houston, Texas. I'm originally from Fiji uh, and lived in California for a while. We had the 
amazing Kripa of hosting Sri Maharaj in 2005 and 2007 um, during his visit to the States. Uh, I am an HR professional. I run startup companies and set up their HR administration. Uh, and uh, yeah. I do not have the words. It is every area vibrates with the energy of Sri Maharaj, with the, the divine love, the divine grace. It's, uh, it's hard to even put into words, honestly. I, I, feel, I feel like I'm at home in a very different way. You, when, when you do your daily sadhana at home, or you do it with your satsangi group, I mean, it's amazing, it's energizing, and we all need to do it. Sri Maharaj said when he visited in, I believe it was in 2005, he said, everyone must take time out to do their daily sadhana, they must take time out to do weekly sadhana with your satsangi group. But coming here, when everything is provided for you, housing, food, your only job is to do rubdhyan. Your only job is to sit in sadhana and focus on your rubdhyan, focus on Sri Radha Krishna, focus on Maraji, and it allows you, it allows you to get to a different level in your in your spiritual growth and your and in, in your path. I just have to show up to this very well put together sadhana shiver and and participate and it just it's been an, an, an experience like no other honestly I, I can't it's difficult to explain but it has just allowed me to fully immerse in maraji's lectures and the kirtans the chantings get into a place of of clarity and to be able to do sadhana in a way that's completely undisturbed I think the best way I could put it without crying, <laughs> you know, Sri Maharaj for me is, it's like a lifeboat. He's a savior, you know, like it does often feel it's overwhelming. You know, I'm in HR. I deal with people's problems all day, every day. That's what I do. I set up company. This, my entire world is problems. And then I want to show up as a good mother to my children and bring them on this path, you know, and bhakti and and every time I start feeling like this is overwhelming, it's too much. I just, honestly, if I just look at a picture of Maharaji or I hear a chanting of Sri Maharaji, it's like as if he's speaking directly into my soul, you know, and I remember that, hey, all this is noise. This isn't our ultimate aim, our ultimate aim is to get back to him, to get back to Sri Radha Krishna and so you just remember that life is short and this isn't all this is noise and we've done it many times over and over and over again and so we can't do it again <laughs> you know that purpose so for me yeah I don't know how else to say it <laughs>
so the vibes of the place are definitely you know a big big plus how we get woken up in the morning at 3:30 i can only imagine when he was here physically and you know once we would hear his his voice when he'd actually be on the other side of the loudspeaker waking up all the sadhaks himself that would be a different you know experience altogether but it was it's it's been a i would say you know it's been a learning curve uh, but all bits of it have been very enjoy uh, you know it's been full of enjoyment i i've been i actually you know feel very nice every morning when i'm uh, it's about to be that 3:30 i'm already anticipating that voice is about to come now now he's going to go like you know jago and all of that apart from that uh, the sadhana experiences uh, for a longer duration uh, as as much as it has been i would say yeah it, it kind of brings you into focus it makes you think less and less about the outside world to a point that i don't even know what day it is today and, and frankly it doesn't matter to me and that's what i realize yeah you know what would i even do with the day i'm still finding it hard to you know locate the god he says is all inside everybody so if if i could probably you know get myself to be more uh, attentive about the roop dhyan and the realization and how he says you know just har aadhe ghante mein socho andar baithe hain you know if if that that starts clicking for me i yeah it'd be a great help um my name is christian marshall and i'm from germany from munich actually um it was um actually i had a book um um a friend um from ireland gave it to me and then um i used to be with a different um spiritual movement i went away and then for two years um i didn't have anything and for very low you know it was very tough time but then i remembered oh i still have that book uh, on the shelf and then i i read it and um it was opening uh really a different world and and then um i asked this friend um to organize um some more books like from maharaji premara sidan and uh, this is the second one i read and after that i really wanted to go and meet maharaji so this was then in 2012 i met maharaji for the dashtami and um so i'm i'm very happy that uh, it all happened Yes, I think for me it's um that there's always somebody, you know, that um um uh, even you that you're never alone, you know, because that's such a big theme, you know, for um most of the people of the world, I guess, you know, um so many people just don't want to stay alone because they they uh, if there's nobody around, that's a problem, you know. But um So if I look back it's it's the, the big thing is that there's always somebody and um God is always waiting for you you know it's and no matter how hard you fail you know that um he has seen your worst and your best but um it's always he's always waiting and always there so I think that's the main thing for me and it feels like there's more more discipline this uh, sadhana program and you can feel it in the hall that people are really like dedicated and um and so i'm always hesitant if i have to ask somebody something because i don't want to disturb them um if they have this wall si- of silence but um i think this time it really is um, makes a difference and um the other day i was not really accustomed yet to to being on time in the morning and so i couldn't get in so this was the first time <laughs> that uh, i was um i was like 10 minutes late i think in the morning and um i was I stood outside and had to watch from uh, and, uh, until like 15 minutes later i could go in and this was really effective for me so um and the same day in the lecture it was um, my she telling us about uh, um being on time <laughs> so it was really um good for me i've seen the um this seva site before but i've never participated before and so um 
I think um, it was really nice that um, this time you could take part in it. And um, normally um, when I come, um, it, it used to be that uh, the foreigners should um, concentrate on the sadhana because they have such short time here. But um, I think this is really nice because um, it says, uh, it gives you something, some practical experience and um, it is really, um, so nice to do that you know them to be able to do something you know apart from donations you know it's such a direct way and um, today i was um, also giving out bags to the villagers and it was really good to see that they really need it and it's a wonderful thing yesterday in the school um, it was uh, it's always so impressive to see you know that um, Maharaj is really changing the world. I mean, it, and you, you, as you said, it's um, you can already feel it. You know, you can see it, and and to me, it's always amazing um, that with a few little items, you can make such a big difference. Yeah, uh, Radhe Radhe. My name is Sunita Sharma, and uh, I'm coming from Dubai. Actually, it's a, a very interesting story. I was listening to Maharaji throughout, like from I'm listening to Maharaji from last 10 years, but through YouTube only. It started in 2013 when I was just searching something, you know, like just getting into spirituality or just wanted to read Bhagavad Gita. So I just get into YouTube and just searching some other videos. I just Maharaji's video pop up and there is one video. It's like almost one hour. So there is a a uh, little uh, very crisp uh, description about Bhagavad Gita so it just hold me back like uh, you don't have because I'm not a good reader so reading a book is very difficult for me so he just like you know explained the full Bhagavad Gita in very uh, good way like I just think I can connect myself so that's how it started and in 2013 and uh, we were moving to Dubai so that's how it started when I was in Dubai, so that time I was not working, so I had a lot of time. I was just listening to Maharaji's video back to back, back to back. So I got so attached and like, you know, I'm doing few things like what we call spiritual things, but it's not actually. So Maharaji has given like, especially for the young generation where we need uh, logic for all the things. It's not like do it. We are following this thing, so you have to follow. So uh, Maharaji has given like very uh, detailed and very, you know, you don't have to follow everything. There is no rules. Anytime you can pray the God. So I was feeling so close to Maharaji, just listening to uh, YouTube only. So back to back, back to back. That's how I met some other devotees online only. And then I got a chance to come to Mangar here. Uh, online, it's very good. So much information is there, but that is I can say something, you know, like if you see the movie, you see the river, you feel good, you wanted to go. But coming here and spending some time, at least I can say minimum 15 to 20 days, then you will get the taste what actually Maharaji is saying, you know, bhakti. We can't do uh, bhakti 24 hours. That's I think it's not possible, especially in this time. So Maharaji has given us some different tasks so that, you know, we are like, uh, Initially, I was like holding my holding myself back. Okay, uh, should I do this or not? Because I'm first time, so I'm just looking. But later on, I'm thinking I should, you know, there, I should come before. So I'm thinking like next year definitely I'm coming. But the festivals are like it's amazing. Shri Govardhan Maharaj, Maharaj, tere maathe mukut viraj rahe. Shri Govardhan Maharaj, Maharaj, tere maathe mukut viraj rahe. Tu pe paan chadhe, tu pe phool chadhe. Tu pe paan chadhe, tu pe phool chadhe. Tu pe chadhe doodh ki dhar. धार तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो श्री गोवर्धन महाराज महाराज तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो तेरे कानन कुंडल सोह रहे तेरे कानन कुंडल सोह रहे ओ तेरी थोड़ी पे तेरी थोड़ी पे ही राला तेरे 
माथे मुकुट विराज रहो श्री गोवर्धन महाराज महाराज फिर माथे मुकुट विराज रहो फिर गले में कंठा सोने को फिर गले में कंठा सोने को तेरी झांकी बलिहार तेरी झांकी जनी विशाल हाँ विशाल तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो श्री गोवर्धन महाराज महाराज तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो तेरी सात कोस के परिकम्मा तेरी सात कोस के परिकम्मा अरु चकलेश्वर विश्राम विश्राम तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो श्री गोवर्धन महाराज महाराज तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो श्री गोवर्धन महाराज महाराज तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो श्री गोवर्धन श्री गोवर्धन श्री गोवर्धन महाराज महाराज तेरे माथे मुकुट विराज रहो भजो गिरिधर गोविंद गोपाला 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 भजो गोपाला गोपाला भजो गोपाला भजो गोपाला गोपाला भजो गोपाला भजो गोपाला भजो गोपाला भजो गोपाला भजो गोपाला महाराज जी सो फॉर मी लाइक एक्चुअली इज एवरीथिंग इट्स बीन टेन इयर्स or i can say yeah 10 years but i never it just like youtube and uh, 2015 i was so attached to maharaj ji because the philosophy is so good and uh, i think i feel i was at the right time in dubai where i don't have much to do so i was just into maharaj ji's um, lectures and all and i used to come to vrindavan only so i just accepted him like my guru so i have picture so i was feeling like he is the one the way he sings i was so it was like very close to my heart like he is the family so i was uh, holding him like a guru everything he is mine but to be very honest like little bit there was a scope i think something i was holding back but coming to here when i'm listening to maharaj's lecture and after experiencing few of the thing then i can understand like uh, the way he saying like uh, guru ru brahma guru ru vishnu guru ru devo maheshwara so actually he is our everything so we just have to hold him so that's how he is changing my life so now i got most of my answers so now i just want maharaj ji's kripa so that i can come again and again whatever like i seva i can do it so yeah so that's the taste i'm getting so i so my name is pranay dalai and uh, actually i was born and brought up in india but i moved to united states for work in 2009 and right now i'm a, a it project manager uh-huh. yeah i mean it's um, amazing when i was also you know preparing myself to come to the sadhana program i was thinking oh my god how am i going to be part of this such a intense program like from 2:30 in the morning all the way it goes till 9:30 and then the same time i realized that you know look at didis right they get up at 1 in the morning and then they attend to so many satsangis and uh, devotees and um, how much they do the hard work for us so that you know we can come here stay comfortably and uh, be part of the sadhana program so i mean it's true it's a little difficult um, and also especially coming from the western world where the comfort is uh, given more priority um, but at the same time look at the didis 
and the other satsang is around us and the energy and the enthusiasm that they carry with themselves that inspires me and i said if they can do it you know i can also push myself a little bit and be part of it and also you know you come here for only two weeks in a year so you don't want to miss anything so sometimes you know i push myself and say okay you know once i go back i'll relax uh, but you know, not miss any opportunities so that's how i i try to enjoy every bit of it absolutely i mean when i um, started my spiritual journey with Sri Maharaji, I think around 2005 and uh, I was not a spiritual person to be honest uh, but the, the thing that inspired me when I came to know about Maharaji is not only Maharaji is doing so much on the spiritual side but also on the well-being of the society so there are three main hospitals uh, one in Mangar, Brindavan and Barsana and also I came to know that Maharaji has established schools uh, for the girls, girls here in the rural part of uh, the Uttar Pradesh where you know people even barely can um, provide the food to the table so the health care and the education is like a dream for them so when I learned about these things and Maharaji started this back in 1970s or 80s and then all has been continuously um, everyone in the society has been uplifted that was really inspiring for me and I wanted to be part of this um, and uh, be on this journey, not only on the spiritual side, but also uh, the social aspect that Maharaji and Didis are doing for last 20, 25 years is truly amazing. And especially yesterday or day before yesterday when I saw the little kids, like all the girls, they from the, all the villages, right? I think there were around 8,000 uh, kids, the girls, they came uh, for the distribution. And I saw the little kids with the smile on their face, uh, with the excitement that they will be getting the jacket, jackets, they will be getting all these things. It was truly amazing. It's, uh, it's beautiful. I mean, you do uh, the seva as well as sadhana and that really blends well. There were so many questions like we grow up everybody who grows up right uh, we always have questions okay why am i here what's my purpose even though you know we are studying and being successful in our career and jobs but you know what is this life ahead of us um, you know after job you know you everybody gets married have kids and then you know die is this meant to be the you know the, the way the life supposed to end or there's something beyond always there everybody has that question but everybody doesn't get an answer so I was lucky enough that I listened to that Maharaj's lecture and uh, I will be honest with me that every question that I had was answered by Maharaj in this lecture. So I decided, okay, this is it. I want to uh, learn more about it. I want to practice and implement in my life. And that has transformed my life. Um, I, um, Maharaj, of course, is my guru, everyone's guru. And I came to know about Maharaj uh, that um, at the age of 32, that Maharaj became a Jagat Guru yeah, he was conferred a Jagadguru title. So not only the aspect of Maharaji on the knowledge side, but also on the Bhakti side. It's a amazing blend, somebody who is, um, you know, so much, he has, knows everything about the Vedas, all the Indian scriptures, Puranas, that he can clarify or dispel any doubts anybody has on the spiritual journey but also the loving side of it you know he is a good guru Sri Kripaluji Maharaj but to his devotees he is just Maharaj Ji.